if there's a 3 here, I need to go to the bottom of the table and grab the last three records and extract them off to the side. But if I change this to 5, I need to get the last five records. Well, if I'm looking up records and I need the last three, I have to figure out what those row numbers are in the table. Well, if we use the rows function, we can calculate. And I'm going to click on the top of the column, because this is an Excel table, to select the entire column. And rows will calculate the total number of rows in that column, which, of course, is 21. Now from the number 21, we need to generate 19, 20, and 21. We can generate those numbers using the new Office 365 sequence function. Well, how many rows do I want? I want three rows in a sequence of numbers, comma. I can skip over columns. The start, well, I don't want to start at 21. So I subtract 3, which is one too many. So I add one back in. And when I hit Enter, sequence will spill the correct row numbers. Now, because this is a spilled array, we could see the formula is grayed out. The formula only lives in the top cell. Now I can use the index function, which is a lookup function. And I need the whole table, so I'm going to, in the upper left-hand corner, when I see that black diagonal arrow, click. I can see that sitting in array. F sales is our full table, comma. I need the row numbers. Well, there they are. I come to the end, comma. And I need column 1 and 2. So in array syntax, 1, comma, means go over a column, 2, close curly bracket. And that, amazingly enough, that single cell formula right here, when I hit Enter, extracts the last three records. When I change this to 5, that is amazing. Office 365 and the new Excel calculation engine and so many of the new functions make everything we did in the past so much easier. Now if we want to add dynamic formatting, I'm going to highlight enough rows below. Home Ribbon tab, Conditional Formatting, New Rule, Use a Formula to Determine Which Cells to Format, Format Values Where This Formula is True, Equals, and very carefully in the Active Cell, that white cell I click, hit the F4 key one, two, three times, because we want that relative cell reference to copy down and over. And we want to ask the question, are you not equal to double quote, double quote? And that's the syntax we're going to use for cell is not equal to nothing. Now I click Format, Border, Outline. Click OK. OK. Now if I change this to 7, it is working. Bonus formula number 1. In the column number argument, we hard coded those values in. If we might get more columns later, we can use sequence. We don't need rows. We just need to, in the columns argument, use the columns function. And because it's an Excel table, that's the table formula nomenclature for always get all the column headers. Close parentheses, close parentheses. Sequence, looking at the column headers, right now will generate a 1 and a 2. And that's exactly what we need. We get our seven records. Now, since we might get more columns, we want to use a formula to pull over the field names. That table formula nomenclature will automatically expand and spill if we add more columns. To insert a column, Alt-I-C, we're going to add a new column. This will just be dummy data. Enter, add 1, copy it down. And just like that, everything's updated. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to check out the old school way we used to extract records, check out this video. Want to learn more about index? Here's a video.